most people get a little bit of success, man. They are able to pay their bills. They're able to buy a car. They're able to live in a decent house. They're able to compete with their high school buddies or their circle of friends, and they're doing okay in that circle of friends. And that's where they stay. And they stay there until they die. And I want you to think about that. That's how people get in ruts. And the only thing difference between a rut and a grave is the depth of the hole. The degree of which you are rewarded is directly proportional to the degree of hard work that you put in. If you just do what you want right now all the time, one of the problems with that is you're going to get yourself in trouble. And everyone knows that. This is why two-year-olds can't really live on their own, because they're whim predicated with no thought whatsoever for the iterating consequences of that into the future. Because people are self-conscious and can see the future, we have to bind our actions in the present in relationship to our future selves. You have to act now so you don't hurt you tomorrow and you next week and you next month and you in a year and five years and ten years. And that's actually a community, community of potential selves that ex extends across time. You sacrifice the whims of the moment, so that's delayed gratification and maybe a definition of maturity. You sacrifice that because it's a better medium to long-term contract or covenant with yourself but at the same time that applies to everyone else because there's no difference between me serving who I'm going to be when I'm 75 and me serving other people that ethos unites I want to tell you what people don't want to tell you why you stop is because you're lazy you don't mind getting bad grades in school it doesn't bother you enough to be mediocre to be average to sit around and watch people do great things you don't mind it. You don't care enough about yourself. When that mind gets relaxed, man, you are It's supposed to be hard, man. It's supposed to be grimy. It's supposed to be gritty. It's supposed to be horrible. It's supposed to be really ugly. I'm supposed to be bad. I'm supposed to be bruised. I'm supposed to be beaten. Your mind has to touch hardship. It's how you start to create the calloused mind. This is how I'm going to grow. I guarantee you, when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. That's something that you love more than yourself, than your dreams, than your goals. Easy never pays well. So if you're thinking that it's just going to be a walk in the park, you're dead fucking wrong. You have to give it every fucking bit of effort and energy you have to pull it off. And you have to work harder than everyone else. Work while they sleep, learn while they party, save while they spend, and live like they dream. In any case, people do waste a lot of time and they, are, they also act counterproductively a lot of the time. Regardless, we do make progress and, 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 and we can thrive under the difficult conditions that make up our lives and we can resist the malevolence that entices us. That's within our power and we don't know the limits to that. And we also know that it's better to, we all know this, that it's better to live courageously than cowardly. Everyone knows that. That's what you teach people that you love. And, and, and we know that it's better to live truthfully than in deceit. And you can tell that too, because that's also what you tell people that you love. And we know that you should pick up your damn responsibility and move forward. Everyone knows that. It's, it's part of our intrinsic moral nature. And that nature is there. It's not difficult to communicate to people about this. Like, everyone knows that you wake up at three in the morning when you left, let your life go off the rails and that you berate yourself for your uselessness and your cruelty and your failure to take, op to take the opportunities that are in front of you. And if you were the master in your own house, in some sense, the captain of your own destiny, if there was no intrinsic nature, well, that would never happen. You'd just let yourself off the hook. There'd be no voice of conscience tormenting you. But no one escapes from that. And what that indicates is, to me is that, at least psychologically, 
We live in a universe that's characterized by a moral dimension, and we understand that well, and that moral failings have consequences, and that they're not trivial. They destroy you. They destroy your family. They destroy your community. And, and you can tell people that, and they listen because they know. They don't know they know. That's the thing, and maybe that's the thing about being an, an intellectual. You have the opportunity to articulate ideas that other people know, they embody, but they can't articulate. And that's what people tell me, you know, they say, well, you help me give words to things that I always knew to be true, but couldn't say. Or, or they say, I've been trying to put some of your precepts into practice, responsibility being a main one, vision another, honesty, I, I suppose, bringing up the pack and saying, this is the fun part of doing all this. Fun is a weak word, that it's, 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 a, it's the remarkable part of doing all this. I mean, I have people tell me constantly, wherever I go, it's so delightful that, you know, they were in a pretty dark place and they tell me why. And there's plenty of dark places in the world. And they decided, well, maybe they were gonna develop a bit of a vision and take a bit more responsibility and start telling the truth and putting some effort into something. And they come up and they say, well, you can't believe how much better things are. First say to yourself what you would be and then do what you have to do. If you aren't happy with who you are, you first need to identify who it is that you desire to be. Without determining the destination you're trying to get to, you're probably not going to arrive there. The next step after you figure out who you want to be in your life is to take the necessary steps towards this goal. After all, putting a tack in a map on the wall is a great first step towards going on a journey. But that's only the first step. In order to achieve the good life that you want to live, you will need to exercise your will and do what you have to do to make your dream a reality. Now I will explain how you can recognize that you are not wise. The wise man is full of joy, cheerful and calm, undisturbed. He lives on equal terms with the gods. Now examine yourself. If you are never sad, if no hope disturbs your mind with anticipation of the future, if by day and night the condition of your spirit is even and unvarying, alert and happy with itself, then you have reached the high point of human good. The greatest obstacle is probably uh, when meditation uh, comes out of a sense of uh, lack or neediness. So you feel you, you are deprived of something, be it money or uh, a relationship or a living situation and you feel there's a great lack in your life and you desperately want this to change and so you perhaps uh, use manifestation in a way that is not likely to work when for example you use affirmations such as uh, I want a better job, I want a job with, an, with a good income and a life situation in a nice place and I want this and I want that uh, by making these statements, uh, you're actually, by implication, saying that you don't have it. So you're also, by saying that you're, uh, uh, there's a reverse side to your statement, I want, and on the reverse side of the statement, I want, there is the statement, I don't have and I need. And similar things, please give me, if you, you pray to maybe God, maybe you pray to Jesus, maybe you pray to Buddha, they do that in Buddhist countries, maybe you pray to a saint or whatever it is, or you pray to the universe and say, please universe, please give me this, please give me that. That also doesn't work very well. If it works, it could be accidentally, who knows, but Usually uh, that greatly diminishes your power of manifestation because it would, 
the manifest manifestation practice arises out of a state of lack or neediness. So there's no powerful manifestation there. The secret of manifestation is expressed in one simple statement by Jesus and that encapsulates all the books that have been written on manifestation and will ever be written on manifestation is just one simple sentence. It says, when you pray for something, believe that you, that it has been given or that you already have it and then, then you will receive it. So the important thing is he doesn't say, believe that you will receive it. He says, believe that you have received it. So there the secret is hiding in that statement, believe that you have received it.